So this episode of Beware the Batman, episode 6, titled Toxic, it was sort of a, you know, like, I liked the episode because it sort of had the sad romance type element to it where, you know, Metamorpho, who, you know, he started off as human and, you know, he becomes Metamorpho, and it's not really his choice and he can't really, you know, control who he is and he can't make himself, you know, be who he was, and it's kind of... It was kind of interesting, you know, where it's like, you know, the sad little story where, you know, like, I can't remember his actual name, um, but, you know, him and Sapphire, they're together, and, you know, Stag hates him, you know, because his daughter, you know, he wants his daughter to date someone else who's, you know, really rich and powerful, so he sets up her boyfriend to basically be, you know, turned into a monster, and he, I guess he did it to try to kill him, but, of course, he ended up turning into a uh, metamorpho, and... You know, like, I didn't know this character at all before watching this episode, and I really like, you know, that he could absorb elements and stuff, especially at the end when he actually, like, turned into air, like, he, you know, transformed his entire body. I thought, that's really cool, and, you know, it's unfortunate. It made me think of Clayface, where I thought he kind of has what Clayface has, except, you know, it's with elements instead of clay, and Clayface can, of course, make himself, you know, look like whoever he wants. And unfortunately, he's kind of just a distorted, you know, really big person. But he, you know, it's it was kind of the sad story. You know, obviously, it can be insanely sad, you know, in half an hour. Or I guess it could have been, but, you know, it wasn't too sad. But in the end, it was, you know, Sapphire, she said, like, she couldn't really be with him because of the way he looked. And, you know, like, that was sad. It's like, oh, I feel your pain. But not really, I guess, because I can't even get a girlfriend to break up with, so different pain. But, you know, like, it had its, you know, sad moments. But the episode as a whole, I really enjoyed because it wasn't the typical villain. It was the, I guess, sort of a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde type of thing, except he couldn't transform back. And, you know, he was, I guess, you know, Jekyll the whole episode, and he couldn't control that. And all he wanted to do was, you know, love Sapphire and be with her. And, you know, Stag just set him up for failure because... Well, Stag's kind of a dick, obviously. I mean, that's all I can really say to that because that's, you know, I mean, you see it in shows all the time, but, you know, it kind of sucks. And that's just how, the way it went. Um, you know, a few little things about the episode that were interesting. Of course, the end of the episode where, you know, Bruce is dating um, Dr. Ravencroft, I believe, and we find out at the end that she's apparently setting him up for something. I doubt she's working... Um, with Magpie, especially since Magpie got arrested, but everybody gets arrested in Batman and escapes anyway, so who knows? It could be her again, and you know somehow she's manipulating the doctor that she used to work with, but obviously something's going on there, so I'm curious to see where that leads to. And also, you know, Tatsu's men mentioned in this episode, but she isn't shown, and she's shadowing the doctor from the previous episode, and I actually thought that they would cut to her, but, you know, they didn't. So I'm curious to see if, you know, he's going to come back in a later episode, kind of how Stag came back in this one from the first episode. <coughs> and, <clears throat> excuse me, if you remember, you know, what he did, what him and Bruce were working on was basically to, you know, give, you know, energy and power to the entire planet for free. And as you could probably imagine more than just the League of Assassins could be after him for something as amazing as that, you know. When someone's that, you know, brilliant, generally they're targeted by more than one person, especially in, you know, the comic book universe. So I'm curious to see if he'll come back in the next episode or, you know, later ones. And of course, if you're really curious, you can easily look up the episodes. I don't do that, though, because I try not to spoil myself for, you know, whatever's coming up in the future because you never know what the little information might read it could seem like it would be simple when it's just you know like 13 words or something but you never know what random twist could get spoiled for you if you look up the episodes but you know if you're that curious you can just google it and it'll be on wikipedia like the whole list um probably for the entire season and how many episodes and all that stuff but you know I, i'd rather just you know wait and see because i prefer to do it that way it makes the show more enjoyable and instead of you know like oh i I read the twist, so now I'm just going to watch it, you know, stuff like that, but I'm interested to see where, you know, both those storylines go, more so, of course, you know, Bruce being set up, and I'm curious to see, obviously, who's setting him up, and, 
you know, how they got Ravencroft in and just why they're setting him up, of course. And then, you know, Tetsu with the Doctor, if, you know, more people come in and possibly, you know, the League of Assassins targeting him again, which would, of course, fuel more of the storyline for Tetsu and possibly more flashbacks of her being with the League of Assassins and, you know, in particular, uh, Silver Monkey. So, you know, hopefully those elements play out, you know, fairly soon. But even if they don't, you know, we'll obviously get them, you know, I would assume in this season at least. Um, the Ravencroft story, I assume, will at least get either next week or the week after that, you know, fairly soon. But, you know, back to the main story, um, like, I really loved it, you know, like I said, the sort of love aspect to it. You could tell, at least I could tell you from the very beginning of the episode, I knew it was Stag just from the fact that he like punched the camera uh, and you know they didn't introduce like a random guy you know later in the episode or anything like that to make you think okay well maybe it was this guy you know from the very beginning you know or well I knew at least you know it was Stag that did that to him and you know he did it you know because he didn't want him to be with his daughter and um like I said I can't remember Metamorpho's actual name but you know he was right you know Stag didn't approve and so he tried to kill him and he ended up turning him into a monster and one thing that I thought was really interesting was when Bruce was originally supposed to go out with Ravencroft and he stood her up it was weird that it skipped like an entire day because if you watch it again or if you you might have caught it he mentions you know like she calls him and he's late because he's um, in the building and he's looking at the stuff and then he sees that he see he watches the recording, and so then he realizes okay, Metamorpho is gonna go um, to Sapphire's house, and so they do all that, and then he fights you know Stag Stag trying to shoot him up. Which also I want to point out, I'm curious to see if they'll ever explain how those guns work because he was just like shooting up this whole room, and everything was just fine. It's like laser pistol bullets or something. I don't know, but he was just like shooting up the whole place, and like nothing happened to anything. So I'm just interested by that, how it hurts people, but like nothing else. But you know, after he escapes that, when he goes to Sapphire's house and you know he gets knocked out, when Ravencroft calls him again, she mentions like you owe me for standing me up last night, and I thought it was really weird that they skipped over a whole day, and maybe it was something that wasn't supposed to be there, and I could have heard it wrong, but I'm pretty sure she said like you know you stood me up last night. And I thought it was so weird that he went from, you know, Stag's facility, I guess, to Sapphire's house. And it was still at night, so I easily thought, you know, it's going to be the same night. And, you know, she'd call him again, and he would have stood her up that night. But she's like, you know, you stood me up last night. And I just thought that was a really weird thing that they made it a whole nother day. And I just thought that didn't make any sense. But, you know, that's just me. And it's like a tiny little gripe that... It's not really even a gripe. It was just something I thought was weird that I noticed. And like I said, easily could have heard it wrong, but I'm pretty sure I didn't. But aside from, you know, that minor stuff, the episode I personally thought it was, you know, like I said, I really loved it because it wasn't exactly, you know, here's a villain trying to do something. It was, you know, here's a guy who becomes a villain, you know, because of the actual villain who's really just doing it because, like I said earlier, kind of a dick and he just doesn't want his daughter to date someone who's not insanely rich like he is and you know like that story element is really good and like I said I love the ending but I guess I can't say I love the ending I enjoyed it because it had sort of an emotional impact and it was kind of sad that you know like he mentions like you said before that you don't care what other people see when they look at me because you see the man underneath and he says like, you know can you still see that and she says it's not fair and she says that she can't and you know he's just like then I have you know he's nothing like that's he lost the woman he loved and he leaves and that's all he has and of course you know at the end of the episode Metamorpho uh, once he becomes like the little water drops in the water his arm comes up and you know that's the end of the episode so of course you know we'll get him back and you know I was thinking that you know he'd be cured in this episode and you know, when, when he wasn't, I thought, oh, it doesn't cure him completely. I thought it was just mentally it cured him, but it didn't change his body. But it didn't do that either. It just, you know, didn't take. So maybe we'll get to see sort of a progression in later episodes where Bruce 
you know, slash Batman helps Metamorpho and eventually, maybe not even this season, but next season if, you know, those episodes, you know, the, the writers and stuff feel like those episodes are really well done, maybe we'll get a completion to, you know, Metamorpho's story and he does actually get to become his normal self again and he gets to be with Sapphire and, you know, stuff like that because maybe the next time we see him, she'll be with someone else and he will be, you know, a normal villain, so... You know, I'm curious to see where that goes as well. Obviously, I'm curious about a lot of things in the show, but, you know, I'm definitely interested in where that's going to go. But the episode, you know, so far, you know, Metamorpho's introduction, I really loved it, and I thought I liked the introduction of a character who, you know, has a sympathetic story. He doesn't want to be a villain, but he becomes one because, you know, he turned into a monster and it kind of messes with his brain, you know, the chemicals, and then, you know, the side of his brain that is still coherent is basically destroyed because he lost the woman he loved. So I love the episode. You know, let me know what you thought below and you know, comment, rate, subscribe, I guess. Thanks for watching.